And spending 10 years in, in Kenya was the most phenomenal learning experience for me in my life. I hope that without me having to say that, having to, without having to say to my students, I care for you, that they can feel that from me. That would be success for me as a teacher. In this episode of Original Story, I'm here in Laidla Hall at Upper Canada College. The college was founded almost 200 years ago, even before Canada was established. The hall I'm standing in today was built in 1959, and since then, thousands of students have graduated on this very stage. Today, I'm here to interview the head of the upper school, Mr. Nahid Bardai. Uh, how did you get into the educational field? Thank you for the, for the question. Uh, you know, for, for me, it was um, a long path to get to where uh, I think I finally arrived. Um, when I had the chance in between my uh, grade 12 and grade 13 year, back, uh, back in the day when I was in high school, we had 13 years in Ontario. And uh, I had the privilege in between those two years of uh, taking my summer and traveling to the northern areas of Pakistan, which is where my aunt was running a school. And I had a chance to volunteer with her for uh, a number of weeks with a couple of my friends and I have a chance to work with some kids uh, in the village that was, that was there. And um, that was my really my first exposure to teaching and to education that sort of way and I really loved it. Um, but I sort of parked that memory and parked that idea and didn't really revisit it again because when I finished high school, I went off to, to Western and was pre-accepted to the Ivy program at Western and went into business school. And for me, business was the path I thought I really wanted to pursue because my, my dad has own business and, uh, you know, I really looked up to him in that sort of way and I really wanted to go into business. And it was until the end of my, my degree when I had a chance to do an exchange overseas in, in Thailand. And I took the next seven months off after that to backpack around uh, East Asia and Southeast Asia uh, and India for seven months when I really began to realize that perhaps what I thought I wanted to do was not really what I wanted to do. Uh, I had thought that I was going to go into business and be able to, uh, you know, make uh, money pretty easy. And then I was going to, you know, use my, my money and experience to help people in other parts of the world, you know, be better, whatever that means, right? Um, I think at that time, a pretty, pretty na naive idea in retrospect. Um, and after that opportunity to travel and see the world a little bit more, I came to realize that perhaps that was not the best way to contribute to the world. Um, I thought the best thing that I could do was to help to educate um, the younger generation to make good decisions for themselves and their own communities. And that's the best thing that I could do. And so I came back and decided to uh, go into education and, and uh, went to do my, my Bachelor of Education degree and had a really great uh, mentor there and went off to the UK eventually after that and did a, did a degree uh, in the UK. Um, and then went straight into education from there as a, as a teacher and, um, you know, really loved, loved uh, the experience of being in a school and have been that same kind of situation in a school since then. What major life changing decisions have you made? And if you could do it again, would you choose the same thing? I think I'd want to speak about um, one of my high school experiences for, for a moment. And it's not necessarily a life changing experience per se and something that I chose. Um, but some opportunity that I had, and, and I remember back when I was in, in grade nine, I was you know, new in the school and there was an opportunity to apply for a conference and they were selecting one student from the school in year nine, in grade nine, to represent the school at that conference. And so my, my parents encouraged me to apply and, and I did do that. And, um, and I remember then being selected and my guidance counselor, Mr. Gage, um, coming up to me and saying that, um, that I was being selected to represent the school. And to be honest, I couldn't, I couldn't understand why. Um, I, I, I couldn't believe that I was being selected to do that because I, I didn't necessarily see that in myself, but it was clear that he saw something in me that I didn't know perhaps existed. And he spent a significant amount of time coaching me and helping me to prepare for that conference. And I think it was the act of being seen in what was a pretty, you know, not a huge high school, but bigger than UCC's high school would have been. And to be seen in that type of way, um, I think gave me such confidence in a way. 
and really helped me to learn more about myself. And of course, the conference itself gave me such confidence to be able to, um, you know, feel like I could take on new things and to try new things out. And that I think was something that was at that moment in time, definitely life changing for me and set me on a certain type of path. Um, I think perhaps a, a, a next moment for me was um, choosing, uh, after doing a master's degree in the UK, deciding to make a choice then to um, move to Kenya and be able to begin my educational career in Kenya. And that I think was a life-changing decision of the different places that I could possibly go to, choosing that one in particular. And spending 10 years in, in Kenya was the most phenomenal learning experience for me in my life. And would I do it again? You know, absolutely. You know, in, in a heartbeat, if I was back in that exact same moment and I could redo that again, you know, 100%, no doubt. Because um, putting yourself out of your comfort zone in that kind of way, in a different part of the world, brand new in a career that I'd never obviously experienced before, um, the amount that I was able to learn about myself and others um, was, was truly wonderful. Um, and I would encourage that for, for anyone to put yourself out there, um, outside of your comfort zone in, in, in you know, the most extreme way you can possibly manage. The amount that you'll learn as a result, um, you cannot replicate in any other type of, of format. So uh, you mentioned uh, that you went to Kenya for 10 years and, and taught there. Um, are there any specific things from that experience that uh, you'd like to share? I mean, there are, there are a lot. Um, I think some of the things that I think about, um, you know, of course, some deeply personal ones, uh, you know, that I met my, my partner, my life partner um, from, from there, and she's Kenyan and we live together here, of course. And so, um, uh, you know, and that of course is one of the most special ones for me. Um, but um, but the sort of the, the, those deeply personal relationship ones um, aside, of which there were also many um, that helped me to learn about who I am, uh, but that would be the most significant. Um, probably some experience, you know, experience-based ones where I, for the first time, um, you know, performed on stage in a theater production. I had never done that before, and I had the opportunity to do so um, in, in Mombasa, in Kenya, where uh, a person who then would be a, a future colleague of mine uh, came up to me and said I had a certain kind of look and a certain kind of disposition, and he said, you know, I always find that teachers make excellent, um, you know, performers on stage because you have to, for so much of your time when you're in a classroom, you know, behave in a certain kind of way. And, um, and so as first I said, you know, no, I don't think so. And, and he said, no, give it a thought, try. And, um, and I said, you know what? I've never done that before. When else will I do that? And so I tried and, you know, really enjoyed it. And, uh, and it was a great production. The, the show was two and a half hours long and I spent two hours, the two and a half on stage. Um, and so it was quite a big commitment uh, and lots of lines to rehearse and learn and scenes and all that kind of stuff. But what a wonderful opportunity. Um, and probably another was um, opening a not-for-profit coffee shop uh, called, called Jahazi Coffee Shop in Mombasa and uh, had the chance to work with some tremendous colleagues of mine at the school and, and with someone who uh, was living in the old town of Mombasa. And, and what we wanted to do is, you know, was saying to ourselves that we expect students in our school to do a cast project, right, when they're older. And so that we should roam all of that ourselves. We should also have a cast project. And so uh, three of us teachers from the school and with someone who lived in the old town of Mombasa, we said, you know, what we noticed is that in the old town of Mombasa, there were interactions between people who lived there, residents and um, tourists all the time. But all the interactions tend to be on a commercial basis. They're all just, you know, transactional in nature. So we wanted to create a space where there could be genuine dialogue and interaction between people who lived in that neighborhood of Mombasa and people who were visiting. So we said, let's create a coffee shop um, and let's have it be of high enough quality that um, that foreigners and tourists who come feel comfortable um, going there, uh, but also at a price point that was uh, low enough that locals felt like they could come in and enjoy it as well. Um, and so we then created that coffee shop and, and that was the spirit or the interest of what we were doing there. Uh, and that was again another wonderful experience that I would, I, would, um, I would do again in a heartbeat if I had the chance to do so. So Mr. Bardai, what's your favorite thing about working in, in this field? I think there's lots of things that I really love about being in education. Uh, I think the first and most important for me is being able to work with young people. There is such energy and passion and hope and optimism 
in, in the teenagers that I have the good fortune to be able to work with, so many at this school as well as other schools. And for me, that's what brings me um, the most joy. Uh, I've enjoyed so much my time here coaching basketball to, you know, year six students, um, to being able to um, work with students in projects such as this um, and teaching my TOK class, for example. That those are the moments in time when uh, I feel such joy. What's also deeply motivating for me is knowing that through that work, through young people, we have hope that we're able to make a better world for all. And so knowing that in some small way, um, you can have an impact either directly or more importantly, indirectly. And as a school leader, that's part of what motivates me in my work that I do now, is knowing that I have the opportunity to help to um, shape the perspectives of young people from themselves, you know, taking what they have and helping to um, accentuate that and build on the characters and characteristics and perspectives that students have, but in the hopes that they use the good that they have in them to help to make the world um, ultimately a better place. And that's what really motivates me to continue to do what I do um, every single day. If you could travel back in time to when you were in high school, uh, what advice would you give yourself? So I think a lot depends on when back in high school I transport myself back to. I think at one point in my earlier days in high school, I would say to myself, um, don't be so timid, that, that, um, that that's something that I would suggest to myself. I think though um, later on in high school, my latter years, it'd be more about saying to myself um, to be more conscious about uh, my impact on others um, and to perhaps to try not to be as self-absorbed, although I think it's totally normal <laughs> for that to be the case, but to try to, to step out of that a little bit and to have more thought about uh, the impact that you have on, on others. But I think probably most importantly, the advice that I would give myself is to give more of yourself or to give more time to your family. Um, in particular to, to, my, um, to my parents and my sister. Uh, I, I, I think at that time in my, in my life, um, I didn't involve them as much as I probably could have. I didn't have as many um, open conversations uh, with them. I can say from this perspective now that I know that my parents, and I'm sure many parents, um, want nothing more than to be able to understand how their child is doing at that stage in their life. Um, and oftentimes, teenagers, including myself, tend to kind of put a bit of a barrier, you know, between them and their parents. So that's probably what I think is the most important piece of advice that I would give myself. Mr. Bardai, how would you define success in terms of a teacher and, and in terms of a student? That's a really, uh, that's a really complex question. Um, I think how we define success is so much based on the individual and what we value, but also what the community around us values. And I think it also changes depending on the time that we are at. So I know, for example, for me, my own definition of my own success, I think has changed a number of times in my, in my life. Um, oftentimes, or this moment in time, at least for me, what, what success uh, means is um, being able to give my all, being able to have a positive impact, um, being able to, in a small way, make a small bit of difference in the lives of others, um, and by extension, in the lives of others whom those people have contact with, would be success for me. What I hope for students is that, um, that success for students, for me, is really that students are better able to find themselves, understand themselves better, that they're able to find some degree of happiness, that they're able to be well, in that they're perhaps able to have a positive impact on those around them. Um, but, you know, again, that's my kind of view of it. And I would say that what's most important is that students are able to feel comfortable having their own definition of success and that they feel like they're moving towards that. And that I, in, you know, by proxy others, you know, can feel like they can help them towards that. That that is what is, um, fundamentally, I think, really important for me. And I think as, as an educator, as a teacher, I guess it's hard for me to speak about 
you know, what other teachers may feel like is success for them. But I know for me as a, as a teacher, I think it'd be similar. It would be about um, uh, being able to feel like you can help the student who's in front of you, who you care for deeply, one that they know that you as a teacher, that you care about them. I think for me, that's, that's really important for me that I hope that without me having to say that, having to, without having to say to my students, I care for you, that they can feel that from me. That would be success for me as a teacher. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to Mr. Bardai for taking the time to do this interview with me, sharing your passions and life stories. Also to my friend David for the fantastic cinematography, and to my film teacher, Mr. Crawford, for your support. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing, and if you have a story you'd like to tell, please email me. I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.